Yeah, about three or four years into the Helm project, uh, we hit sort of this period of, of like collective burnout. Several of us really burned out around the same time. And, and we experienced it because in part, you know, we had worked on a lot of the, of, of the cool features we wanted to do when we were starting to hit that part of the roadmap that was just the really difficult problems, a uh, lot of maintenance burden, the issue queue was, what was starting to feel unmanageable. Uh, and in, in part it was because we, everything was in production. Right? When you're in that creative space at the beginning, it's very energizing. But at some point, you're in production at other people's companies and you are sort of in a secondhand sort of way feeling responsible for what happens when things go wrong there. And when you get issues coming into the issue queue in those scenarios, people are often starting from a position of anger or frustration or, 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 or despair, right? And, and you feel those emotions when you're, when you're triaging the issue queue. And I think at one point, a bunch of us just started to feel the drag of effect of that. Uh, and and it, it had gotten to the point where for a little while, it wasn't so much that we weren't motivated to work on new features. It was really like, how do we just keep the lights on right now and, and, and feel okay? Uh, getting over emotions like that can be a can be a hard thing to do. Uh, one thing we discovered that helped us a lot was we just kind of got it out in the open. A lot of us talked about it. And then we start, started working on, okay, how can we rotate a couple of people on and a couple of people off at a time? We had the advantage that at that point, about half of the core maintainers of Helm were working at Microsoft. And so we had a little bit of control over our daily schedules and could help shift things around there. Uh, that definitely helped. The, the group support helped a lot, right? Just talking about it out loud, uh, setting up a way for somebody to discuss openly. You know, my mental health level right now is a little low. I need a couple of days, but I can pick things up again. Uh, we also, we worked on growing the contributor base and we all talk about, oh, that's a great way to, to combat burnout. It was actually sort of exacerbated it a little bit at the beginning because trying to find people willing to step in and get them trained was actually hard and was an emotional investment. But longer term, that paid off really well. And a lot of the people that came in uh, were not coming in with sort of like the, the I guess you'd call it like the the founder's perspective or the original creator's perspective where there was a lot of maybe, you know, uh, personal identity sort of wrapped up in the project. For them, they were coming in it as operators first, saying, we've been using Helm for a long time. We've got some ideas on how to make it more usable. But more than that, we just care about sort of helping people get the job done. So getting that fresh round of people in there uh, with a different perspective really helped the rest of us even out. Uh, and then the other thing we did that actually, it was a small thing, but it made a huge difference. We sat down at one point and we said, uh, we're going to write up a, like a how to handle an issue thing where we're going to say when a new PR comes in or a new issue comes in, here's a pattern we're all going to follow. You know, if they come from it frustrated, start out by saying, I'm sorry, you're having a hard time with this. Help us understand what this is. You know, here's how to uh, here's how to here's some documentation you can look at that might help you. But the pattern was really designed around empathy. And by doing that, by saying, here's how you start with addressing the user's emotional state, then you move on from this into, you know, starting to help them figure out how to provide you the information you need to troubleshoot. We did the same thing in PRs. The first line of the PR review would always be, thank you so much for contributing this, right? And start by acknowledging and being gracious about it. And then you could kind of go into the PR and say, you know, we can't accept it while this part is looking this way. But what it did for the people on the other side is it de-escalated their emotions, which then in turn meant we had to, we had less to absorb, right? But what it did for our part was it gave us a template that allowed us to sort of emotionally detach a little bit and say, okay, well, the process is acknowledge the user's emotions, you know, thank them for their work, you know, start to help them on the path to, to, to discovering the, the bug or solving the problem and move on from there. So it was a way of sort of emotionally de-escalating on both sides of that. And that helped us a lot. Uh, but, you know, ultimately when it comes to burnout, I think everybody kind of has to acknowledge if you've gotten all the way to the burnout stage, stepping away for a little while is the main thing you often have to do to just decompress. So we learned, you know, to kind of be able to tell a little bit before burnout. And once you've got those sort of good mental health practices where people are talking about how they feel about it, then you can start saying, ooh, you're getting a little close to the burnout there. Uh, you know, instead of burning you out and then you having to take a long, uh, long, you know, extended stay of absence from a project, you know, you want a couple of weeks to just sort of go on, you know, PR triaging duty or step down or do something else for a little while. And that kind of thing helped quite a bit. Awesome. Thank you.